the, the reviews are coming out. And they're not great. They're not terrible. They're not great. But for this era of Doctor Who to be successful, they they needed to be stellar because they've actively thrown away the the, the audience, us, right? They're like, oh no, you you icky phobes who don't like the Doctor, you know, jack, jacking off into uh, uh, I don't know, the Master's mouth. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, I don't actually. I don't. Right. I don't. These people are out of their bloody minds. Like everything is about sex all the time. Like that's why I'm like so sexually orientated on it because they make everything about sex, right? They make everything about sex. So uh, uh, let's start start with the Telegraph review. Then we'll go to the Guardian. I think the Guardian only gave me three stars, right? Okay. Again, three for this to be successful, to this to get a third season. Okay, what do they need to do? They need to get traction. They need to get an audience. They need to get people excited about it. They need to get people talking about it, right? They, they, their best uh, case scenario is if they have a hit to the to, – that's like that, that, war, that worked as well as Fallout. They want, to, they want to be as big as Stranger Things? No way. Did you notice Stranger Things wasn't constantly telling you, you know, they're – Weird sexual preferences, right? They, they, it wasn't all about. It was about a good, fun story evoking the eighties. Yeah, uh, none of it was about wokeness, right? It, this is going to be the most agonizingly woke shit uh, I think we've seen for years, and I just don't get it. I don't get it. How they like, like how they see so much failure, and they go, "Yeah, we're going to do the same thing, and this time it's going to work." Right, I don't get it. I mean, it's insanity. I know, but look, I keep saying the world's going to end, right? And I don't, <laughs> but like, it's insane. So, Doctor Who Series fourteen review: Judy Gatwa shines amongst a clunky culture war posturing, uh, uh, and I doubt he, I, I doubt he really does shine. Frankly, I just think people are scared to say the the Emperor's got no clothes. Really, I really think that, that that's what it's about. The only series begins with Space Babies. I still think that's the, the, the name of the writers, people are making it. And the devil's called. The Disney budget is obvious, uh, but so are Russell T. Davis's messages. Yeah, it's going to be agonizingly clunky, right? Agonizingly clunky. <clears throat> After a Christmas episode of Doctor Who on uh, Disney, uh, Disney Plus and BBC, uh, properly introduced a new uh, uh, new timeline Judy Gatwa. Now, I, I really didn't get a beat on him at all. In the giggle, other than I mean, I probably did. He seems to be a preening, uh, uh, self absorbed cunt, right? Running around in his knickers, uh, just not being very good, just not being very doctory. Like, I, I don't believe he's the smartest man in the room, right? That's the bottom line. I don't believe he's the smartest man in the room, I don't believe he's particularly moral, right? Especially that speech he gives about not having a job. Can I find that speech here? Let me go one second, we'll do uh. BBC Doctor Who. I think I think it was on the official uh, um, BBC Doctor Who channel. Like, it, it, there's a oh here it is. Yeah, where it's uh, it seems to be almost identical to the end of the world. The 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 end of the end of the world. Where is it? YouTube download or where? Quick. <coughs> There we go. Start. Just thinking about it. Oh, I keep forgetting I've got the thing built into my browser now. It just makes life so much freakishly easier. Oh, here it is. Good. One second. Let's have a quick look. Keep going. For days like this, Ruby Sunday. All right, again, she is she strikes me as being very relatable. Right, like being a, like a genuine here, and I believe her emotions throughout. I, I really think she's a talented actress, right? I, I mean, honestly, I would love to see her go go really far, right? I would I'd love to see her be in the role of Shakespeare. Coming. I think she's genuinely, genuinely talented, right? I think she's the best talent they have on screen right now. I don't have a people. I don't have a home, but I don't have a job either. See, I don't like that. I think having a this is so Gen Z, right? That they like, oh, having a job, oh, that's so boomerish. Yeah, no, you have to have a fucking job, and it's also a good thing to have a job. It's a good thing to have a work ethic, 
That's why they call it ethic, right? It doesn't strike me that this doctor has a work ethic, right? That, that like, oh, I don't have a job. I don't have a boss or taxes or rent or bills to pay. I, I mean, like, like, these are all the worst things in the world for Gen Z. Like having a boss. Oh, no, i got to do something. Somebody tells me. Or bills to pay. Or ta like, yeah, no, don't run from life, right? Don't run from, like, the uh, responsibilities of life. They, they're actually good for you. They make you feel good. Of a purpose or a cause or a mission. Doesn't have a purpose or a cause, really? <clears throat> but I have freedom. And so I keep moving on to see the next thing and the next and the next. He just seems like a vapid loser, a vapid self loser. Now, again, okay, look, honestly, I, I'm going to try and watch the new episodes with an, as much of an open mind as possible. But boy, they they've really, really, really put uh, like uh, pushed me away, right? They've really, really pushed me away. Um, and I don't like this messaging. I don't. Sometimes it looks even better through your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so where's this then? Whoa, uh, huh. Planet Pacifico del Rio. Oh, that's in English. They speak English here. English exists. Uh, no, 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 no. Humans don't speak one language by this point. A bit like Cantonese. Uh, um, this is what it really looks like. But the TARDIS translates. It's got a perception filter, so it helps you fit into every time and place. I get, it just doesn't. I, I wish. I wish I thought he was great as the Doctor, but I just think it's a case of the Emperor's got no clothes, and people just don't want to say it. Right? It. He seems. Better than Jodie, but weaker than every other Doctor, right? I mean, and written to be a vapid loser. I don't have a job or responsibilities because they suck. I'm free. I'm so free and fluid. Oh, it's so good. No. God. Like, you know, be... be. Don't run from responsibility, which is what I feel this is doing. Okay. Um, probably introduce we're down to business with a double bill. Stupid idea. Launching we'll the new series. The first is Space Babies. Will delight the audience of under tens. Yes, it's dumb. This new Doctor Who is for stupid people. Doctor Who should not be for under tens. It should be for intelligent thirteen-year-olds. Right? Uh, that's what I think, or at least intelligent twelve-year-olds. Let's say. Um, the second devil is called My Boy. You to tears. Whatever your age. Oh fuck me. Is it might well be right? Might well be boring as hell because um, you yeah, know they got Jinx Monsoon in it, and they're like, "Oh, everyone's gonna love it." Oh, just imagine Jinx Monsoon. Ooh. Um, since Disney joined forces with the BBC to create the Hooniverse, the show. Well, they don't have the Hooniverse on Disney, right? The show is uh, taken on a new tone, slick, expensive, and nothing here to scare the horses. Oh, so true. And again, I'm speaking of somebody who uh, uh, didn't mind the uh, the church on Ruby Road, right? I, I, I really didn't mind it. I thought that was... Uh, I think with probably with, 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 a, with a more convincing hero in the middle of it, uh, with, a, with, with a hero that I didn't just fuck me off so much all the time, uh, there, I, it, it, I, like, I thought the idea of the goblins was interesting, the whole different universe science was interesting. There's a lot to recommend it, right? It just, I don't know, just, Shooty seems to be one of their biggest blunders so far. Mostly there's nothing here to scare uh, anyone uh, who has recently graduated from uh, Bluey or Peppa Pig. The Doctor Who episodes that linger in memory from the childhood were uh, the unsettling ones. Logopolis featuring The Watcher. That was unsettling, wasn't it, right? That was genuinely unsettling. I'll say that as, as well about uh, um, the image of Fendel. Generally unsettling. Terrified the life of me. Now a show is so unthreatening that uh, one of the episodes turns into a musical. Well, I'm glad it's not both. The first baby, uh, first uh, space baby, is three stars. They get three stars. Uh, the doctor and uh, the doctor and his companion Ruby Sunday, played by Millie Gibson, visit a space station populated by babies who can talk uh, and who can zoom around in their little buggies. It's cuteness overload. The plot involves uh, nappies and bogies. Uh, which make uh, which might be fun for younger viewers, but cringe 
worthy for adults. Now, don't be wrong. I love the um, the uh, the wheelie bin eating eating Mickey. Let's see if we can pull up that. There you go. It'll be where is it? Doink. Oh, in the, now I'm in my Blake Seven folder. Oh, no, I'm meant to go Doctor Who. Doink. Uh, I'm in, now I'm in the wrong one. Ninth Doctor. Ah, Rosie. Okay, fine. Let's see if I can find, find the wheelie big uh, section. Because anyway. people complain a lot about this in the when it when it happened. Is that is that Autumn Mickey? Yeah, I think that's Autumn Mickey. Yeah, there you go. It was just before this. Don't read my emails. I love that about him. Oh, no. So he was outside. It's not more Autumn Mickey yet. Uh, second. Clive is in it for 10 seconds. In his shed. Man, I, uh, you know, I, can't, I, I miss Doctor Who being good. Okay. So, yeah, the, we're about to get the wheelie. But people were like, okay, traditional Doctor Who fans were really upset by this. Singled you out. The doctor's making. Okay, this CGI is a bit clunky, but it's from 20 years ago and it's fine. Right? It's fine. You don't need insanely good C you don't need the money they're spending on it. But people said this was too 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 kiddy. I don't think so. I think it actually really does a good job of uh, bringing, bringing together it's a plastic menace. Oh, I wish I could go back in time and tell, tell him to watch his back. Yeah, people hated the burp, right? People absolutely now is that too juvenile? I don't I don't think so actually. I think that that might be the sweet spot. I mean it's a little it's a little bit Sarah Jane Adventures, but uh, I think it was okay, right? I think Space Baby's probably not. Um no we have to uh da, 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 da. Uh, it's cringe worthy for adults and entry level episode in many ways. It has uh, it has a doctor explaining the basics to Ruby. He comes from Gallifrey, has two hearts. Uh, the TARDIS is a time tra uh, time traveling machine based in the kind uh, uh, based on a kind of police box we used to have in the street corners. Indeed, this is marketing. It. This is season season one. So so the BBC. It's season one. The talking babies make for a silly bit of storytelling, but I enjoyed the my. Uh, but uh, I enjoyed it on my children's behalf. <laughs> then I said that. Then, uh, then it's on to the devil's call. Two stars. Fuck me, that's not good. Two stars, uh, which is best appreciated by people old enough to be familiar with the Beatles. So that'd be me. But man, these Beatles look nothing like the Beatles, right? Nothing at all like the Beatles. With the whole of history at disposal, the 19 year old uh, Ruby chooses to go to EMI Studios, 96 Reads, in which the Beatles record their first album. Uh, the music has been stolen by a villain named Maestro, meaning the Fab Four produced lyrics such as, I've got a dog, he's called Fred, my dog is alive, he's not dead, from Paul McCartney or, or Fat Age and Paul McCartney as they're doing it over here. Um, uh, explains that he wants to make a bit of money out of cheap old rhymes. Uh, John Lennon uh, says, sadly, I'm not good at anything. In the next studio, Silla Black is singing badly, uh, albeit not as badly as a real thing. <laughs> That's quite entertaining. Um, but this this villain, it, I'm sorry. It looks like shit. <laughs> no, he likes it like it looks like she it looks like shit. Jinx wants it, it, it looks like shit. I'm sorry. Not doing much for me. The episode is a good opening scene, but that's as far as it goes. Uh, but that goes on for what feels like forever. With drag queen Jinx Monsoon chewing the scenery as maestro. Uh, yeah, it's a new villain. It's not the master. Uh, the Beatles are, uh, uh, 
idea is thrown away again and uh, logically inconsistent. If we're in a world when where no one whistles or hums or taps their feet, why is anybody uh, recording an album in the first place? Okay, it must be a plot point. Uh, how uh, how have the Beatles lost the ability to write lyrics, uh, but not to sing in harmony? How can the is uh, oh, because this is all about not playing any Beatles music, right? They're keeping it copyright free. How can they play instruments uh, uh, properly, but uh, the orchestra can't? Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, I think Russell's probably just more interested in the message. Right, Russell Davis makes clunky attempts to be current. Ruby mentions Beyonce and, and Sam Fedder. Fuck me, Beyonce and Sam. Really? Like, nothing says that uh, uh, Russell Davis is out of touch more than, like, him. Like It's like this old granddad saying, hey, kids, let's get down with it. <coughs> the doctor claims to live in Shoreditch, and of course, the, um, there's the po- uh, there's the Pollux. We're fighting the culture wars, not Daleks. Uh, and Davis wants to know which side he's on. We know Russell, right? We know. I I, I um, was speaking to somebody who was very involved with the Space 1999 um, Big Finish box set at Earthbound, which was a really shit Brexit analogy, right? Uh, uh, and the point I made to this guy was that uh, we all know what your politics are, right? We everybody knows you. Don't, there's no need to scream it to the world. Uh, so we're fighting culture wars and not dark and cyber. That's not a good. That's not good news. At all. So space based reference uh, references refugees and government cuts on rest- uh, and restrictions on abortion. The planet used to uh, planet refused to stop babies being born. But once they're born, they don't look after them. Oh, fuck off. Right, right. It's such a moronic, uh, uh, vapid, modern leftist answer that, like, yeah, you know, what about life being worth something? It, again, if you're not if you're not wealthy, then uh, uh, then your your life's worthless. But again, I think that fits in. That's on brand with this Doctor Who, which is like, oh, I don't have a job, Ruby, someday. Or responsibilities or anything. Oh, I just go do. You know, that makes you sound like a loser, right? It's good to have responsibilities. Uh, it's a very strange planet. Uh, gender pronouns crop up, continuing, continuing the thing from Starbeast episode. Bleh, when Jigs Monsoon arrives, get them and get away from him. A character warns, and it's a them retorts Maestro. I'm them. No, you're not. There's only one of you. Well, actually. If Maestro is like a, a celestial toy maker like villain, they can actually, you know, legitimately be called them. Uh, yeah, but why? Why are you continually lecturing us with shit that uh, uh, we we know definitively now? Like we absolutely know definitively. Uh, it's uh, uh, um, very, very, very harmful to children, right? Like, like it, it, this is science factor now. Like, 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 stop with the trans shit. Stop, try, stop telling children that that being transgender is um, a a healthy, viable option. Because all the science says it isn't. Right? It's not. Fine. Uh, the main asset of the new Doctor Who is Gutwer, who carries the series along with the force of his me- uh, megawatt charisma. That I believe, right? But that charisma, he's destroyed it now. It's all gone, right? It is all gone. It, it bizarrely. Oh, where, where is it? Here, let me find it. No, man, I, I had to reboot my computer at one point. So here, maybe let me go to EW online. Let's see if I can. I'm, I'm searching my history. Um, e, EW.com. Will that come up? No. Uh, oh, EW. There we go. Is that it? Yes. I mean, yeah, look, this megawatt charisma uh, is gone, baby, right? It's gone. It's not there anymore. This shit has killed it. I'm not... Yeah, you you were charismatic before you started waggling your nipples around. Now you're not anymore. You're just annoying. Annoying and... Oh, God, just stop. So, yeah, if if that's all they've got to carry it, they're fucked. Right, and it, this is a three-star review. It's not gonna do well enough, right? It's not gonna do well enough. Um, where are we up to the? Um, 
when the doctor does something, nobody grows up wrong. You are what you are, and you're magnificent. But but I still completely advocate you cutting off bits of your body if you're not happy with growing up wrong. It may be now that uh, with Davis hammering his point, but gutless delivery makes it become a joyful method of self acceptance. Uh, well, it used to, but like not anymore. Oh man. Okay, look. Yeah, one second. I got to go over here. Let, I mean, I want to show you what what you know a, a successful working Doctor Who should look like to the public, right? Wait, now where is this thing? Is it over here? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Ah, oh, it's too many, too many things to find. Where is it? Ah, um, oh, here we go. Doink. This is what it looks like when you when when you actually do connect connect with the public. It looks like this. Right like, again, and look at his delight at being Doctor Who in costume. Right, I mean, admittedly, yeah, uh, 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 you know, shoot his shoot his in costume, w w waggling his uh, bronze nipples around. <laughs> but look at his delight. Right, right, it, and it's not a delight. Okay, here's the difference between Shuti Gatwa and Tom Baker. This is his delight in being loved and accepted, and like uh, uh, lifting, and, and, and he loves the children loving him. Right, Shuti Gatwa's all about loving himself. Right, it, everything about him, everything about Shuti Gatwa is about him loving himself. Right, everything about uh, um, Tom Baker. Is about him loving, like being, being being successful, doing this great job. He's loving the joy on children's faces, right? This one looks like he's lo he's loving the come on children's faces. I, I, I like that. Fuck off with this, like Russell. This is not. I know this is a shit you get down. It's fine. I, 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 this is not what wholesome normal people do. I mean, we did when we we're kids, but like we grew out of it. Look at the kids around him, right? Oh God! Okay, look, there's that, that just pure joy. I think this is in Belfast. I'm I'm delighted to be in the province this afternoon. I'm delighted, actually, by my reception. It's quite nice to see you. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Tom Baker did that to me one time, put his hat on me when I was like five. Fagan's bookshop, uh, children's bookshop. Uh, uh, doing a sign of Doctor Who and the monsters or Doctor Who and the dinosaurs. Uh, uh, oh, God, it was magical. I, was, I still can see him, like, right in front of me. He took his hat off, put it on me. Oh, it blew my mind, did my head in, in a way it, it, it still stayed with me today, right? And the mayor's car mysteriously seized up on the way. <laughs> Where's the TARDIS heading to next? Do you know, I don't know. I never know, you see. I work on four or six scripts at a time. I don't know where I'm going at all. Are you delighted with the welcome you've got here with your TARDIS? Oh, yes. Wow. Look at it. Isn't that amazing? Wonderful. Ah, uh, again, this is what you're aiming for, right? Oh, God, look. He's going, he's going into a school. Oh, God, I love this. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you all smiling? <laughs> Gosh. Reminds me of when Johnny Depp went to school dressed as uh, Captain Jack. I love that. I can hardly believe it. <laughs> can you believe it? Yeah. You can. How old is Mark? Eleven. That's a good age, eleven, isn't it? Yeah, an intelligent eleven-year-old. Are you the oldest in the class? You don't know. Okay. All right. Here's a birthday present for you, Mark. Happy birthday. Eleven tomorrow. Oh, you're very welcome. Very welcome. Oh, man. And now we have this. 
<laughs> like, really? What are you t- like? Like, what? Like, why do you think I'm complaining? Good say. Okay, let's look at uh, um, the Guardian. Right, the guy. Gu- if the Guardian can only manage three stars, that's not good news, right? That is not good news. Jack Jack Silver reviewed this. Seems like it seems like he's got a bugger his ass right there. Probably his first review. Shooting up will make this show far more fun than it's been for years. Well, that's not fun. Fu- that's not fair. That's uh, uh you know, you, you, years. It's been what seven years since twenty seventeen. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's been way more fun than it was unwatchably bad with Jodie Whittaker, who I am no doubt this cunt said was the greatest thing ever, right? Let's have a look. Got Jack Seal, Doctor Who mag. Uh, Doctor, let me see it there. Jack Seal, Guardian, Doctor Who, Jodie Whittaker. Let's see if we can find out an old review of him. Why am I getting images? Yeah, so I had to say Guardian. Guardian. Is it Jack Sill? Did I spell his name wrong? Right. Let's see uh, um, what he had to say about this. But this was the, uh, the Sea Devils one, where like the Emperor really had no clothes at that point. Uh, man, the cannons, uh, man, the cannons back up for Easter special. Uh, with the title of the we have the wonderful Jodie Whittaker. Yeah, okay, fine. You've told me everything we need to know. What's wonderful about her that she was unwashably shit in the role? Uh, I mean, okay, Shooty. I don't think he's gonna be as bad as Jodie, okay? Not the worst doctor, whoever. This is it, the 50th doctor's here, and he's dazzling, all singing, all dancing delight. Yeah, really. We hadn't noticed, right? We hadn't noticed. Oh, yes, maybe we did. Um, where are we? The new of Doctor Who. Oh, well. Uh, Christmas specials don't count. I disagree. I, I, I really fundamentally disagree. I mean, they're, they're throthy, and they're, like, more, you know, uh, general audience than, than the main show. But I think they totally count. I disagree. Uh, inter- uh, intermediate trilogies with David Tennant as the 14th Doctor or whatever don't count. Well, okay, I get that. The new era Doctor Who with Russell David uh, back as showrunner and shooting at as a Doctor only really begins here. The new season proper. Yeah, there's a fair argument to be made for that, okay? The first double uh, comprising uh, Space Babies and the Devil's Cold Off. And every time I see it say Space Babies, I go, oh, fuck off. Uh, points to the stellar future for Doctor Who. No, really, again, the wonderful Jodie Whittaker. Yeah, she was so wonderful that everybody wanted to jump out of a, uh, out of a window whenever they saw her come in the room. Um, da, 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 da. Uh, points to the stellar future for Who as a youthful, chaotic playground of imagination. No, it used to be like a, a, a moral giant, right? Um, I mean, I'm not, I'm not opposed to it being fun, right? Uh, but I, I think it needs to have more depth than than, than that. Uh, so, like, I, yeah, I went from, like, his charm was working on me, and now I'm just irritated by him every time I see him. And, and why? From, from entirely, entirely through this, like, this last uh, uh, marketing offense, uh, this marketing campaign they went on, where they just completely openly said we don't give two shits about you right we do not give two shits about you uh, um uh, we want our new audience of studying and brave gen z's they are not gonna pick up on this right he thinks gen z are gonna flock to it oh no, no. i mean maybe they will maybe they will i i doubt it i doubt it um i think it's gonna crash and burn epically uh, 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 hopefully the apocalypse will come first. Uh, uh, well, this is, there'll be one reason for the apocalypse not to come first, to see it really genuinely fail. That'd be awesome. Um, well, well, I guess, Solo, who was Doctor Who playing a youth, uh, youthfully chaotic playground of imagination, far more fancy, uh, fancy of foot and light or outlook than it has been for years. Yeah, I know. Jodie Whittaker's shit. Um, it only takes baby steps for now towards the new destination, but we can see it. Yeah, we can too. That's why we're going, oh, fuck off. We don't want to go there. 
Gamma established himself as a cracking doctor immediately. What an obvious per uh, perfect piece of casting is. Excuse me, you said that Jodie Whittaker was wonderful. She was absolutely useless in the role. Right? Your word has no meaning whatsoever. It has no weight to it. it. Has no gravitas to it. it. Has no validity to it. I'm sorry. I think you like him because he's black and gay. It's yeah, yeah. Any here's the th here's the thing you can always tell. Well, I like. We often get the criticism, and I did, did in my in my comments. The only reason that I have anything against uh, um, the uh, the uh, the only reason that I uh, 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 no, I just totally lo lo you know lost my train of thought. The only reason what I was going to say. The only reason I was uh, I, I totally lost my train of thought. Ah, I don't mind. Fine, I'm sure it'll come back to me in twenty minutes. Uh, so Swamp Sounds has a, a cracking dog. Oh, yeah, no, the only, yeah, they keep saying the only reason that I don't like him is he's black and gay. No, when they say that, they mean the only reason that um, they like him is because he's black and gay, right? It's not because I don't like him because he's black and gay. You only like him because he's black and gay, right? That That is the uh, uh, the Guardian, right? Uh, it, it, this guy, it's totally uh, what he is. Uh, so, so yeah, he's saying the best is the best thing, best thing since sliced bread. Where, where, um, where is it? What, what obviously perfect piece of casting is you saw things about Jodie Whittaker, commandingly hence, com commandingly hench in his colorful costumes. I, I hate all the colorful costumes, right? I can't just have a costume, uh, and naturally able to express dazzling extremes the doctor has to embody. What dazzling extreme, okay, whatever. Um, he gl he glowers at the end of the world. Uh, at the end of the world, uh, he glowers, he glowers, and the end of the world descends. And Anna suddenly he grin he grins, and we're having the most fun in the universe. Here's the thing: it's like you keep telling us what uh, what this is going to be. Nobody had to tell us what Tom Baker was like, right? No one had to tell us what uh, uh, you know any of it. We we're like, oh, like you didn't need to tell me that how powerful. David Tennant was in the role with the Doctor and Matt Smith because they, they just were. Uh, skipping and dancing on uh, on a few occasions here, uh, doing a sideways gallop uh, when he enters the room like Kramer from Seinfeld with spring in his heels. I mean, it sounds like shit, but I, I, I'll, I'll watch it. You know, again, if it's good, I'll say it's good. Uh, Star, Trek, this, uh, Star Trek Picard Season 3, that was good, right? Things, meanwhile, has always been a writer who deals with big ideas uh, more than precise dialogue or watertight plotting. That's fair. I mean, he's always been dealing with more like entertain, uh, being entertaining. Uh, capable of those uh, latter things, uh, though he is, uh, flush with the many, many extra dollars that comes with the global time with Disney, British viewers have to stay up until midnight to join the global premiere. Fuck you. That, yes, yes, fuck you. Over I mean, it's so out of line. Right, that is just so out of line. Uh, wait, wait, the um, uh, premiere of this year's episodes, times as they are to suit US households. David looks unlikely to uh, blow the cash just on shiny lasers. That's exactly what he's doing. Bigger spaceships and scary monsters. I mean, again, have you seen the TARDIS set? It looks ridiculous. I'm sorry. It looks expensive and it looks ridiculous. Um, where we are. Uh, uh, biggest major. Devil Cord sends uh, uh, sends its budget, for example, on a wonderfully unnecessary, unexpected musical sequence. It scores uh, of dancers telling the world that this show has has a green light to do whatever it wants. Every Disney show has a green light to do whatever it wants, as long as it uh, 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 opposes and attacks the, the nuclear family. As, yeah, you can do whatever you want as long as you 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 hate the white male patriarchy or whatever bullshit you want to believe in. Uh, it scores the dancers telling the world that this show has been greenlit to do whatever it wants and it uh, wants to be it, it, it wants to be hard to predict. It's going to be shit. How about that? It's going to be gay mincing shit. How about that? I, 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 let's see if that that uh, that's going to be hard to predict. Uh, conventionally, an episode uh, to open the much anticipated new season will be. Uh, uh, tightly honed, but Space Baby bulges loosely uh, despite going to absurd lengths to accommodate new fans. And, and, and yeah, they're, they're only going to accommodate new fans 
the old fa- people are going. If you like Doctor Who, you're going to drop a drop out of this very quickly, unless you're too scared of saying you don't like a black gay Doctor Who, right? That the, if you're too scared of that, then yeah, you watch it. And boy, not many people are scared. People just go, don't like it. It was this thing is silly, boring. But they they, they were assuming they were going to get a David Tennant size success, right? They were assuming they're going to get a uh, uh, Tom Baker like success. But boy. Uh, uh, and I bet after that that shitty Davros skit on Tilton and Need, uh, Russell was like, "Oh, there's so many racists. We got to be, we got to try harder to re re-educate people." Yes, that's what we got to do. Uh, the first ten minutes was almost entirely given no gut. We're standing over the controls and starts explaining to his boggling uh, companion Millie Gibson, Ruby, uh, why he's the do- why he's called the Doctor. What happened to his home planet Galloway? Fuck off, really. So it's like Exposition City, right? What the TARDIS stands for and why the outside looks like an old-fashioned police box and so on. David undercuts all this sm- uh, this smartly with a throwaway trip to a distant past uh, that enjoys making clear Doctor Who's approach to logic or time travel maybe uh, might be a little cavalier. Well, it certainly is now. But when the Doctor and Ruby have arrived at their first port of call and apparently abandoned space station... He's still wanging on about the TARDIS automatic translation software. We just saw that clip. Uh, one wonders whether this household, uh, this housekeeping could have been w- woven more efficiently into uh, the action across several stories. Yes, it could have done. However, th- it's being written to agenda, right? The agenda is everything, right? The agenda is all in this era of Doctor Who, right? That That's all they really care about is the agenda, and once you once you do that, it, it makes you impossible. To, it makes it impossible to be able to write well, right? It's it just get like, I mean, how many examples of that do you want to do? You, do you want to cite? Uh, yeah, we're not officially uh, a few stories. Yeah, probably right. I mean, are you keeping them for a few stories again? This Jinx Monsoon thing looks shit. Uh, in the time of their space maybe there's a textbook example of uh, mid ranking who installment again. Man, that's not doing anything to bring people in, is it? Fun, uh, but fun, and ultimately uh, uh, a fun but forgettable. He, this is. Do, do you remember? Uh, uh, do you, I mean, think back now. Does anybody really remember or care about anything in the Jodie Whittaker years? Is anybody going? Oh man, do you remember? You know, like, like what we did for Matt Smith. I, I, there's so many good things. I, 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 I watched Curse of Fenric last night, and it was awesome. No one's going to look back on this and go, oh, awesome. I mean, like, even the specials are going to be forgotten almost instantly. And they nearly are. They nearly are. I mean, like, do, do you remember... Uh, do you talk about resolution ever? I mean, like, does anybody talk about any of this shit ever? Spyful? No. I mean, the, the, only, the only reason it's mentioned is to denigrate it, apart from a small band of insane people that live on Twitter... Right, that can't believe the world is isn't the way, way they think it should be. Uh, da, 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 where am I up to? Uh, hold on, try summarizing uh, what follows uh, on from the arresting initial revelation that the spaceship's being pilot, uh, piloted by a gang of babies in stroller. You will, uh, for, I mean, it's kind of, that is a fun idea. Right, uh, I, but it's just not pulled together very well. I will say that about the uh, the Six Doctor release I'm listening to right now from Big Finish, the, the Quinn Dilemma. It's a fun idea, but man, I'm finding it really hard to get through. Fine, I'm finally on 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 the last part of it. Uh, hopefully, I'll be able to review it on uh, on Thursday. Yeah, I'm going to review that and Image of Fender on Thursday. That that's my plan, and we're going to do the previews for uh, the Devil's Cord and Space Babies. Uh, wait, wait. Try summarizing what follows in the uh, uh, on from the resting initial revelation of space being piloted by babies. Annual will falter within su- uh, such a half formed narrative. David usually uh, usually stirring efforts to dot the script with political and personal messages are awkward. Yes, I'm sure they are. Because you know, here's the thing: I people don't really believe in the bullshit they're saying. Rusty Davis doesn't think it's a good idea for children to. Uh, uh, surgically uh, uh, alter their bodies to feel good about themselves, right? He does not think that's a good idea. He doesn't think that's a good thing. Uh, uh, but, he's, he, but he has to think that. Otherwise, he's evil. And so I think that um, 
That schism is what is what uh, breaks writers. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, narrative. Uh, he just about gets away uh, with a rousing speech on Doctor about learning to embrace being unorthodox, uh, but an allegory to, about the rollback of uh, abortion rights in, in the US is accompanied by the deafening scrape of a crowbar. And this is the Guardian saying it. Gower and Gibson need to muster all their open-hearted energy, which is, uh, in the best possible way, childish to uh, see the story through. Man, this is going to get roasted. This is going to get roasted in, in ways that you couldn't imagine. Uh, fine. We don't, I'm not going to have to imagine. We're, we're going to see it. Much better is episode two, The Devil's Gone, which takes the Doctor and Ruby to Abbey Road to witness the Beatles recording their first album. I, I will take them to go and visit them uh, recording Rubber Soul, frankly, or uh, uh, what's the one after Rubber Soul? And I'm thinking of uh, Rubber Soul. Uh, Everything Rubber Soul and Sergeant Pepper, great album. Beatles album after Rubber Soul. Let's have a look, see what it says. Um, Revolver. Thank you. Oh, God, that's painful. <clears throat> yeah, I'd much rather go that, be there and watch them uh, record Revolver. That that would be really cool. Uh, recording their W. Amazing, says the Doctor, when Ruby makes a suggestion. Uh, and as the pair arrive, I mean, again, I, that sounds fun. As the pair arrive in uh, Fort Austin Powers outfit, he does a cheesy Cockney accent to further suggest that uh, this will be a gaudy uh, Carnaby Street romp. This, however, is an auto 1960s where the Beatles are churning out soulless pap, like Doctor Who, and stop her at all of her. Cat was disguised, um, astonished. Uh, Cat was disgusted, astonished fa uh, faces, hilarious. Uh, thanks to the villainous uh, ma maestro, Jeeks Monsoon, and astonished humanity's ability to uh, enjoy sucker music, uh, sucker music, ex uh, musical expression. The narrative ultimately. Uh, 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 the narrator's ultimate message is sentimental about uh, 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 sentimental amounting uh, as it does to uh, David saying, I love music, me. It's brilliant. But uh, Monsoon's uh, wicked witch flamboyance gives a menacing edge, and that song and dance number arrives joyously uh, or sensationally randomly. It, it, uh, if a comeback season uh, can find stories to match its creator's flair, uh, and it's leading man star power, new new dimensions of the way. It's not going to be good, right? It's done. No. Can they do it? No. No. And you know why they can't do that? Because they're not hiring people based on talent. I mean, that bloody simple. Here, look at this. Uh, Doctor Who showrunner confirms uh, more diverse writing talent for season, uh, season 15. Who gives a shit about their diversity? Fucking imbecile. And I finally worked out why, why Millie gives us smiling here and like looking so confident while the other two look like they're shitting. So the other two do look like they're shitting. I mean, look, Shooty Gatwood doesn't look like he's smart enough to be shitting himself. Russell Davis looks like he's shitting himself. He knows he's about he's he's about about to flop. Right? Millie Gibson, I got I'm out of this and I got myself a role in a new season, in, in a new series. Um fine. So who who they got? Like like hey, what's their qualif qualification writing? Oh, he's black. Okay. Uh, News of Doctor, the upcoming episode six has been written by Russell D. Davis, uh, while one has been written by former showrunner Stephen Moffat. Uh, meanwhile, episode six, Rogue, has been crafted by the writing team of Kate Heron and Bryony Redman, who recently uh, recently viewed Men's Journal. Dave explained how they came on board. They work for Disney. They, they're they not white men. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, they did show that it was ge generally uh, uh, panned by everybody and almost universally hated and that's even with literally the most charismatic, charming star in the world, Tom Hiddleston. Uh, I hugely admire Kate Heron's work on Loki. Really? What did you like about it? Tell, I mean, I'm intrigued. Tell me more. What was it specifically you thought was good? Right? Because I watched Loki, and it seemed to be mostly about introducing female Loki and having her be better than Loki. Right? The only thing about the only part of Loki that I really enjoyed was uh, Richard D. Grant as as alternative Loki. He was great. Everything, and that's just because he's Richard D. Grant. Everything else was shit. I'm sorry. It was wasted money. 
Uh, obviously, I wanted uh, obviously I wanted women writing. Why? Why didn't you just want people writing? And I'm aware we haven't got enough uh, women or writers of color. So you know what? Okay, what do you do when you reduce your uh, your employment pool? You reduce quality. There's no way. Of, there's no other way of doing it, right? There is no other way of doing it. Uh, uh, I don't. I don't know what the 28 day workout challenge is, is uh, ad on this side over here, but like, like it's not a great ad. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, you could look like this fat piece of shit uh, after 28 days of the workout challenge. Okay, lovely. Um, which we're fixing in the next uh, series to come. There's nothing to fix. Like for God's sake. Like, like, let people choose to do what they want in life, right? I understand, Russell, you are in an industry full of liars and racists and sexists and abusers, right? That is the that is the TV industry. And losers, right? It was it you know what? You know, you know how powerful TV was? That we always knew you were liars and racists and sexists, right? But we didn't care because you put stuff on that we liked, right? Now you're liars, racists, and sexists, and also talentless fucks. Who wants to lecture us? Wants to uh, lecture us on morality while being our moral fucking inferiors? Uh, so can I make contact o uh, over Lukey? And she introduced me to Bryony, uh, who might uh, who might not be so well known unless you're in the com moving comedy circles, where the improv and stand up. Uh, uh, she's a legend. Who cares? Why not bring Suze Kempner in? Oh, everybody loves it. Nothing's going to go wrong with that, right? Oh God. Uh, they just bring their own style. Or maybe they should bring Doctor Who style, right? Uh, based on this, it certainly sounds like it would be more diverse writing team uh, has crafted a already in production season 15. Perhaps Davis is writing a few episodes himself. But again, why, why is this racist talking point even a story? Ah, uh, disgusting. I mean, like, honestly, I, 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 if Martin Luther King was brought back to dead and brought back from dead and he could see the state of racism today where, where, the, where the, all the anti-racists are, are, are just full-on racist. Although, again, that's what the Israel thing has done. Weirdly, right? It's turned the woke into Nazis. Like, they're now they're literal Jew-hating Nazis, right? Um, perhaps with uh, Davis writing a few of us himself, uh, if this is the case, there's a follow of a similar pattern to Davis' first year on the show, uh, when he wrote eight or 13 episodes of season, season, uh, season one, but only five for season 13, uh, five or 13 for season two, three, and four. Yeah, okay. Do you, I, I, I don't think there's going to be a season three. All right. I do not think there's going to be a season three. I'm sorry, but no, I just don't think that's going down, mate. I, like, not in any way, shape, or form. Uh, let's see what's going on. What else we got going on in. Uh, 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 should we? Where is that? No, let's do, do a bit more Doctor Who stuff. Uh, I'm trying to tell where to go next. We did the Guardian. Let's have a look. See, see what bleeding cord. Okay. Have a look at this. Doctor Who is back this week with a new season one. Remember when, when it first came out in 2005? It was called Series One. Uh, streaming worldwide for, uh, to attract first time viewers. Who don't have to worry about the sixty-one years or passes cut out with? No, again, the the reason things work is because they're good. The thing reason things get an audience is because they're good. Like I, I didn't know anything about Fallout, and I watched it, and, and, and I got it right. I, and I didn't need like like this big uh, uh, explanation about everything, right? Because it was. A show just about being a bloody show. It was. It wasn't trying to do anything else. Uh, I just. They, I just don't see it happening. He really thought he was going to get the entire old audience plus Gen Z. They really. And they. I like. I don't think he thinks that now. I think they shake themselves now. And good. I'm glad. Uh, fine. For, uh, Rusty is back as showrunner for a new era with the BBC and Disney Plus are premiering. Blah 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 blah. Uh, every first ever Doctor Who with a new Doctor and a Commander is practically a new show for the, uh, and this time it's both uh, new and old again. Cranked up to a hundred, and you know, when they crank up to a hundred, that means they don't have any substance normally. I mean, I don't know. Uh, the first episode is uh, the, in the modern era. Rose premiered nearly twenty years ago. Uh, yeah, nearly twenty years ago now. 
uh, and Davis knows uh, knows it's a very different time. Yeah, is it better or worse? Much worse. Where streaming has changed TV landscape, uh, he has done. He has to do everything he can to keep new interests and uh, new viewers interested. Uh, you know, okay, this is what the first thing you've got to do to get to to maintain an audience. Be authentic to to whatever it is that you're doing. That's the most important thing. You've got to be authentic to whatever it is that you're doing, right? Um, here we have to. And I don't think you're being this is authentically Doctor Who, right? Like, I get, I, look, why do I not think it's authentically Doctor Who? Uh, you tell me, right? You tell me. Why does okay? Why do I have to get the feeling that Doctor Who's going to give me a blowy in the back of a back of a club, and that's all totally normal, right? God, stop! Can't stand it. Stop! Where is it? Did I? Is it? There you go. Uh, I'm sorry, I keep going back to that video, but man, does that illustrate everything perfectly, or what? Uh, wait, wait, so the first thing of the road, blah 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 blah. Uh, he has to do everything he can to keep viewers interested. And man, he uh, does he hit the ground running more than uh, more than any other TV show premiere we've seen quite some time. The first uh, five minute, minutes alone of the premiere are a uh, a map of coherent uh, but, but coherent dash to let first time viewers know exactly uh, who these characters are. Did that work in '96 with Paul McGam? Nah, didn't did it. Uh, who these are and who the characters are, uh, what the show's going to It's full of gags and establishing uh, shooting out of Millie Gibson's chemistry. That they have. Like, anything with Millie is good, essentially. Uh, if you like the uh, like them in the Christmas special one, I did, uh, which is the first episode of the new series, a soft launch, uh, as, as it were. Space Babies is designed to make you fall in love with them. I'm probably going to make me cringe at anything. It really cranks up their chemistry and their sheer charisma their ability to play copying off each other and how they uh, play play the scripts notes from um, uh, from joy to joy to comedy to sadness uh, instantly. Okay, uh, Space Babies is utterly hysterical. It's possibly the most insane thing uh, Davis has e ever wrote in his career. Uh, I bet it's not hysterical. I, I, again, I bet it's like cringe, and I bet it's like just not that great. Uh, there was overwrote in his career. Never mind, Doctor. Who. Yes, it features babies in space. You have to be completely heartless not to find these cute and go. Uh, yeah, you're supposed to go. Ah, oh, okay, that's fine. Um, uh, do, 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 do. You go after this. Just, just what watching the episode, and it's hysterically funny, as if Davis is saying, uh, "You think Disney is going to make the show cute and gooey and sentimental? Yeah, sure, but uh, then things get really, really crazy." While still making perfect sense, I bet they don't make perfect sense. It ties together all the themes of the Doctor and Ruby's story in a wild combination of goofy cuteness, surreal humor, and uh, heartache at the same time. Along, you know, is there a, is there a story? I mean, is there a, like, is there an engaging story? Right? It seems to be that's the least important thing, along with David's penchant for Bob social and political commentary. Sayonara. Good luck, everybody. Goodbye. If David feels, uh, if David's, if it feels like David's way of taking Disney's notes uh, to create a US pilot and amping it up right from the start, then it gets crazier and crazier. It goes, I sound like I'm going to have a headache by the end of this. As it, as it goes, I'm going to start to wonder if you're hallucinating. One could only hope. It's like watching Screenwriting 101 lesson on meth as the episode's Big Bad. Uh, in Space Babies, we probably have the grossest monster in the history of Doctor Who. You might have heard of Save the Cat. It's uh, Hollywood screenwriting slang for showing the hero uh, saving someone or an animal to prove they're sympathetic or likable. All of Space Babies is Save the Cat. Dial it up to 11. Yeah. Don't dial it up to 11. Like, have a solid 7. A solid, you know, like, work out what you are and what you're doing. Oh, God. I'm sorry. The more I see Jigs Monsoon, the more I'm like, oh, God, this is going to be awful. Uh, if you're like David starts out the new season of Doctor Who, crazy. Uh, he's totally uh, planned to top it by the finale. Uh, and it's uh, um, he's already setting a very, very high bar. 
Uh, Disney quite rightly sent over uh, a list of things not to spoil pre broadcast uh, uh, reviews of the first two episodes. Uh, and what I can say beyond the Doctor and Ruby go back to 1964 or 63 to meet the Beatles is literally anything else about the episode. It would be a spoiler. Well, we, we everybody else has spoiled it. I'm sorry. Uh, so I'm not going to tell you anything about the story uh, other than it's no less crazy than Space Babies. Yeah, music has been stolen, right? It's a bit more serious and darker. Davis might be channeling Ryan Murphy's American Horror Story and casting Jinx Monsoon as Maestro. No, he's channeling uh, uh, his weirdo, uh, uh, yeah, his weirdo take on sexuality and and, and gender. Uh, Maestro, the villain, uh, uh, the villain of the story. I, I, uh, I was uh, casting Jinx Monsoon as a villain. Uh, sorry, I say this because Monsoon's loads of fun to watch. Campers are row tense, uh, flamingly extravagant, but also menacing, uh, like one of the e- evils in Murphy's series. Okay. Um, I think I think the most you know, menacing thing about uh, 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 Jinx Monsoon is the you know insidious uh, um, drive to tell children that. Um, uh, uh, you know, they, they should cut their bollocks off essentially. Uh, uh, so the pro throne is on, on Disney Plus, uh, for talent switching team, wacky comedy, and heartbreak. Uh, this, the and promise of the rest of the season will escalate the insanity. Doctor Who streams from uh, look, listen, I will give you an honest response, right? I will give you my honest review. Oh, god, shoot, you just stop looking so fucking smug. For 10 seconds, stop looking so bloody smug. Oh, uh, this is a quick. My name's Fila Beck in the Rabbi from Another Planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. Yeah!